All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to start talking about columns and their tendency to buckle when subjected to an axial compressive force. Now, if you remember back at the beginning of the course, we talked about normal stress and we calculated normal stress as being equal to the applied load over the cross-sectional area. Now, those videos, if you notice, the, the problem was always set up so that the member was in tension. And that's because if you slowly, uh, if you slowly increase that applied load in tension, uh, to the point where you get the material yielding, we're going to find out what that material, uh, sorry, what that yield stress is. Um, and from yield stress, what you do is you apply your factor of safety, and then you're given your allowable stress, uh, which is basically just the stress that we're, uh, the, the maximum stress that we're going to let the member be subjected to, uh, and we're not going to be concerned about it yielding at all. Now, in compression, um, even if the normal stress is less than the allowable stress, it's possible for a column to buckle, basically having a rapid change in shape, something like that, um, if its equilibrium is disturbed. So equilibrium can be disturbed, you know, by just by the tiniest of environmental conditions or anything but an absolutely perfect alignment um, of the column as built, or, you know, even a slight imperfection in the material or something like that. But not just any axial compressive load will make a column buckle. Um, imagine if you just grab your, uh, your pencil and you push on both ends towards the middle, you're putting it into compression, but it's not buckling under that load. If you put like way, 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 way more force, you know, try to support a bookshelf or something uh, fully loaded with your pencil, then you're going to be getting buckling. So there's a point somewhere that we're crossing uh, with the applied load that we call it P critical. It's the critical applied load. And uh, the expression to find out what that is, basically this is the, the load that the, the column will be able to buckle at. Um, this is just equal to pi squared times EI over L squared. All right, so the material properties, uh, it depends on the actual column, right? E is a material property. Moment of inertia is dependent on the actual cross-section uh, of the column. And L squared here also depends on the actual column we're looking at. So if P is less than P crit, no buckling will occur. And if P is greater than or equal to P crit, buckling will occur. So this expression here that we have for P critical is called Euler's formula. And what we want to do with that is we want to rework it a little bit to go from P critical to the critical stress. So we'll write critical stress. So if we have stress is equal to P over A, then the critical stress is just going to be equal to P crit, the critical load there over the cross-sectional area. So we already have the expression here for P critical. So the critical stress is just equal to that, pi squared EI over AL squared. And if you remember, uh, another way that we can write I here, the moment of inertia, is I is equal to AR squared. So A is the cross-sectional area, and R is the moment, uh, sorry, is the uh, radius of gyration. So we can substitute that in. The A is going to cancel with the one on the bottom there. So we're going to have pi squared ER squared over L squared. Now, the way that I would rework this is, um, or we can reorganize this a little bit, so uh, just not leaving anything out, we have pi squared E. This is the same thing as uh, multiplying that by R squared over L squared. And then we can also write this as uh, pi squared E divided by the inverse of this. So pi squared E, this is equal to pi squared E divided by L squared over R squared. And uh, that can also be written as, maybe let's come down here. So this is uh, the critical stress is equal to, we'll just bring the square out there. So it's pi squared E over L over R squared. Now this L over R here is what we call the slenderness ratio. Um, Basically, if a column, the more slender a column is, the bigger this number will be, and then uh, the smaller, uh, the smaller critical stress will be able to support without buckling. Now, 
um, if the column is not circular or square, so like a rectangle or an I-beam, it's going to have one short axis, and um, that is the direction that the column is going to buckle in under eccentric compressive load like this. So in those cases, you'll have, uh, you'll have more than one radius of gyration, so we want to select the smallest one um, for that given cross-section. Now in a square, the, the radius of gyration is going to be the same in both directions, and so the column could equally buckle in either of those two directions. And for a circular column, there's uh, the radius of gyration, there's just one, and so it can actually just buckle in any direction. So that's just stuff to think about. Um, critical stress, as, we, as we've written it here, is proportional to the modulus of elasticity and inversely proportional to the square of the slenderness ratio. So again, just basically a long slender column will be more likely to buckle than a short stubby one. And uh, that really, that makes sense intuitively. Um, so anyways, that's just an introduction to column buckling. Uh, we haven't considered safety factors in these expressions yet. Um, so we're going to come to back to that later in a couple of videos. Or also if the, um, we haven't really done the analysis yet of what, how to tell whether or not a, uh, a column will buckle first and it, before it yields or if a column would yield before it buckles. Um, so we'll get into that stuff in future videos. And uh, in these expressions here, we're also, in future videos, we're going to replace L here length with effective length um, because there's different types of columns that can have different end connections. But I think that's enough for now for the introduction, and I'll see you guys in the next couple of videos.